I'm Mr. Jackson, Chief Meteorologist David Heckard. Well, it's been a very active couple of days across southeast Georgia and northeast Florida, and this isn't necessarily a rainy season event, nor is it necessarily a nor'easter. It's kind of a complicated weather pattern that we normally don't see in mid to late May, and there's a really three key ingredients going on here with this activity that we're seeing out there. Well, first off, we've had a very active weather pattern. You can see we've had a lot of rainfall across much of southeast Georgia and much of Florida. The first big deal is this area of or the cold front that has basically become draped across North Florida. That's fairly common in late May because a couple of things are happening. One is the big air masses, the cold air masses and the warmer masses they're not necessarily that cold anymore up towards our north so it's difficult to keep a keep a strong cold front pushing its way through the area and the other factor is down here in the tropics we now have really deep tropical moisture that has built into parts of south florida and that also kind of helps prevent cold fronts from completely knifing their way into the region anytime we have a cold front that slows down and just kind of gets draped over the area what that does is kind of enhance our daily rain and thunderstorm chances because cold fronts by their very nature help lift the atmosphere and create more rain and storms. So that's part one of the equation. But a second and very big part of the equation is these upper level disturbances that we've been seeing. Now they're very hard to see on say radar or satellite imagery, but meteorologists can keep a close eye on them looking at different parameters. And what these upper air disturbances do is they really help enhance the coverage of the rain and thunderstorm activity. And they come through not necessarily in a typical cycle which is why sometimes we've seen shower and thunderstorm activity in the middle of the night and sometimes the heaviest rains can occur maybe at 9, 10 o'clock in the evening. Well, a lot of this is based on the fact of these upper air disturbances. And what ends up happening is the cold front actually acts like train tracks. So it's what these upper level disturbances want to run on or very close to. And that has also helped enhance the rain and thunderstorm coverage. The reason we think this is going to go on for a while is because we have a third key feature that's going to develop here later on in the week. We expect an area of low pressure to develop off towards our south and east along this cold front, which will eventually clear the area. As it does so, it's going to continue to kind of wrap around moisture back into our area. So I don't think we're going to be talking about widespread rain later on in the week, but we will still have the threat for some scattered showers and thunderstorms, especially if you live along our coastal areas. And you can see here in our rainfall graphic, a lot more rain chances ahead. But I do want you to notice something as we get into Memorial Day weekend. Notice how the rain chances really, really drop off. There is some good news in this weather pattern, which is that surface low pressure I talked about, it's anticipated to lift towards the Carolinas. As it does so, it will likely drag some dry air from the north right down into our region, which likely will mean a very nice Memorial Day across the air. So bottom line, a very active weather pattern that will continue courtesy of our cold front, the upper air disturbances, and the developing storm system. I'm Assistant Chief Meteorologist David Heckard for Channel 4, The Local Station.